Welcome to the Treasury Update Podcast, Coffee Break Sessions, presented by Strategic Treasure. The show where we cover foundational topics and core treasury issues in about the same amount of time it takes you to drink your cup of coffee. I'll be your host, Jonathan, media production specialist here at Strategic Treasure. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We are back with another Coffee Break Session with Craig Jeffrey, Managing Partner of Strategic Treasure. Craig, what is Rarock? Ray Rock. First question is, how do you pronounce it? <laughs> yeah, in the biz we say Ray Rock. Uh, how do I pronounce it, or how is it pronounced? Right. So it's a risk-adjusted return on capital. This is the way that many banks evaluate their customers. They put capital to use with their customers. Right. They might provide uh, credit either directly or credit due to operational activity, right? Cash management services. There's a risk element to that, right? Because of transactional activity. Risk adjusted return on capital. So there's a return on capital calculation. What is, What are we getting back for what we invest in this company? And so risk adjusted means a very high risk company needs a higher level of return than a low risk company. And so the risk adjustment is a way of reflecting that necessary adjustment. Someone who's three times as likely to default will require a higher return, you know, for the bank than someone who's, you know, very, very unlikely to have uh, some significant issue. It's a way of standardizing how they view the value of relationships. So it's reporting or it's an action? It's a calculation. So it's a, here's the return. I'm, I'm looking for, maybe they're looking for a 15% risk adjusted return on capital or 17% or it depends on the the time and the issues, but let, let's just say 15%. They're looking for everything above that. Other than that, they may say, this is not worth it for us as a bank to, to do business with this particular company. And how is it calculated? That's probably too much for a, uh, for a coffee break session or even a, a highly caffeinated session, but it's without going into the formula, but I mean, most of our listeners will be familiar with different company ratings. Like there's a rating, you know, S and P Moody's standard and Poor's. there's different ratings and different tiers of credit quality that companies, the companies look at that banks look at. And so that's a way of identifying a level of risk. And so double a is far different than B minus, you know, across the board. So that those, all those have certain factors and ratios and those, those, feed into the formula to determine how much capital the, the bank has at risk uh, and what's the exposure level so that they can calculate that. And a very significant majority of banks do this. Um, corporate banks, investment banks, they look at this, you know, they're deploying capital, they need to get a return on it. How do you look at that systematically? Banks do that. The other, the other thing, John, is there's a, a small percentage of companies also do their own calculation of their own risk adjusted return on capital. Now they're making more assumptions about how much profit or margin the bank's making on uh, cash management services, on card services, on retirement services, all across the board. They're making assumptions on returns. The bank tends to know what their costs are a little bit tighter, but some companies will calculate themselves to show and see how are they being important to the banks that they want to be important to. What kind of return is the bank getting on us you want to make sure that they're making at least the minimum hurdle that they need to make, or it's not going to be a, a good deal for the bank to maintain that relationship. Uh, or they'll always be pushing to to get more to get it to the point where it makes sense economically. That was my way of sort of explaining the concepts without trying to get into the formula. I don't know if that was satisfying or unsatisfying. Yeah, but now you have me wondering, what is the formula? <laughs> <laughs> We need to do a regular podcast on that or maybe a, a small video where you can show show the formula and talk through that in some depth. And that might be a that might be uh, interesting to to show that and talk through that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, so what factors influence Ray Rock in a business context? How is the bank's balance sheet exposed? Right. Are you lending? Do you have financial instruments? Is there something about payments or operating activity? Because no matter what's going on with operating activity, there is some level of exposure. It can be different levels of exposure. So the level of exposure is a factor in terms of the return on capital. And the other factors has to do with the credit quality of the, of the company or the organization. How risky is it? How stable is it? All those factor into the calculation. So the higher quality you have, the less you might be able to pay for things because you're less risky. And that's better for the for the bank from a, a Ray Rock perspective. 
Therefore, they can afford to charge you less. You're very risky. They're going to charge you more. It's like insurance for your car. They're like, how does my credit rating affect my the prices for insurance on a car? Well, there's a correlation there. The lower credit scores are as a group, the higher the, uh, the accident and claim rates are. Why is that the case? There's correlation there. I mean, you can figure out why that might be the case, but this is the same thing on the credit quality of the organization factors into the, the risk element, which is part of the return on capital because it's calculated using risk. And why don't the banks just tell you you're Ray Rock? Conversations with your primary bankers uh, should be you know, open, upfront, over time. There should be that transparency. And so are we above the hurdle rate is a reasonable question to ask. And if you're there, say, no, you're below it. What is the rate you're trying to get? How close are we? Having a conversation about how they evaluate the relationships matters. I also think the you can ask the banks, but for many organizations, they should be doing their own share of wallet calculation, which oftentimes and should include your own internal risk adjusted return on capital calculation, because you want to know you want to be important to the banks that are important to you. How can you be important to them without a conversation and without doing some calculations and monitoring over time? So those are bank relationship management uh, type questions. Getting to perhaps the question behind the question, how does this matter? So I'll, 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 I'll do a corollary here. If someone's trying to negotiate bank fees, you may say, here's the standard bank fee, the average, the median, the, the 25 to 50% price range is here. You're charging us more. We think we should be at this level. Well, if your organization is extremely risky, the bank is putting up capital. That might be what's necessary to make the return that's necessary for the bank. So just looking at here are the the standard pricing for things may not fit for you as an organization. Um, At the same time, you may be like, hey, we're paying middle of the road prices, but we're extremely strong financially. You may have room to push it more towards uh, you know, you're getting extremely you know, far better prices across the distribution curve. Cool. Well, thanks for sharing your your thoughts on Ray Rock. And to our listeners, remember to tune back every first and third Thursday of the month for another Coffee Break session. This podcast is provided for informational purposes only, and statements made by Strategic Treasurer LLC on this podcast are not intended as legal, business, consulting, or tax advice. For more information, visit and bookmark strategictreasurer.com.